Yo. <laughs> yo, 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 what's up, guys? My dudes and dudes it. What's going on? Happy flippin' Saturday. Psycho, have you not seen the uh, intro montage before? It fakes people out, dude. It fakes people out that haven't seen it. Night's almost over, word, duck. Yeah. Yeah, you hadn't seen it before? Yeah, so uh, I was hoping to have some new ones done, some new uh, montages up before the uh, two-year anniversary. So that one was done um, as like a... Uh, a montage and kind of like a uh, a thank you to everybody for the first year anniversary and uh, i was hoping to have some more done by this second year but then i got sick and i got behind on some stuff so um but i'll have some more done here before long that way we can watch we'll have some other montages to run and stuff while i take breaks and everything um in the future just because i've got a, a lot more content that i can turn into some like nice little uh you know 10 minute long montages or whatever that we can run and stuff but yeah dude there's a lot of people uh don't real they're not always here for the beginning of the stream but uh yeah that's what i do i start up the stream and we've got like a uh, that montage right there is just a bunch of clips from the first year of us being live in the channel that's that's what that is dude <laughs> it, it, it psychs people out sometimes they don't know what's going on you know <laughs> uh how was your night dude how was work how has it been so far anyways it's good to see everybody uh we've got video gaming moves this morning and then we got a bunch of showcases man um oof oh nice okay cool man yeah good for you for uh you know most people don't do that anymore a lot of people if they get a, a another job lined up they don't they don't stick through with the other place uh you know for like the two week notice kind of period and stuff, give them ample opportunity to uh, replace and everything. And uh, that sucks, dude. It sucks for that employer to, to have to find um, people to take the the, uh, the spot without, I mean, even two weeks is tough, you know? Ooh, yikers, dude. Okay. Well, that's good, I'm glad. Yeah. So good for you for sticking out. I know that that's a brutal work schedule right now both those jobs and everything but good on you man yeah so we've got uh let's see here we have video gaming news then we will do uh try to finish up the gorilla collective we started yesterday probably um we've got about an hour left of that and then we'll watch future of play direct Wholesome Direct and Future Game Show, and we'll try to get a little bit of gaming in this afternoon. I won't be able to go quite as long as I did yesterday, so it won't be like a 10-hour stream or anything. Um, I'll probably have to bounce by about 1,500 this afternoon, maybe just a little bit after, probably around 1,500, something like that. So it'll be a nice long stream anyways, but um, I do have something going on this evening that I've got to get prepared for, so I'm going to have to bounce by about 3 o'clock this afternoon for me. So um but it'll be a good day lots of showcases we'll get the news in and we'll get a little bit of gaming cool that's the that's the jam lamb that's the plan dude cool oh for real yeah bummer dude bummer did you find him uh did you find a monitor yet dude all right let's go ahead and get into this man let's get in here so we got uh some Loop Hero vibes. That was that's what we're we're jamming out to this morning, man. Some Loop Hero stuff. Very cool. Um, kind of auto battling roguelike game. Um, RPG elements and uh, it's got some like synergies with tile placements and stuff that can have some weird effects on the world that you build every time you do a new run and stuff. It's really cool. It's a cool game. Um, it's got a cool soundtrack in my opinion. That's why I run it. And, so if any of that's uh, seeming cool, go check it out, okay? Loop Hero Jams, dude. Go check it out. Cool game, cool soundtrack. All right. Let's go ahead and get into the news, man. Time for video gaming news, dude. Uh, we got some stuff up already from our buddy Tenwin for Blasphemous 2. 
So we will uh, we'll dive into that a little bit after we get all of our articles up, okay? <laughs> Wait, what? Gamers react poorly to data showing more women own switches? Okay. So you did find one though? Nice, dude. All right, cool. If there's anything else you're still looking for, let me know and I'll keep an eye out. I'm always trying to keep an eye out for good deals and stuff just for the community in general, but there's if there's anything specific you're you're in the market for, dude, I'll try to make sure that I'm I'm uh specifically keeping an eye out, man. Save big on Steam Deck games for a limited time. All right. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, we've hit on the Spider Man stuff. I'm I'm kind of in this uh this same group here. I'm not I'm not okay, cool man. Yeah, yeah, no worries. <clears throat> Just figured I would try to help if I could, brother. That's it. Um dude, I'm not a big fan of laptops either. They have their place, you know, they have for a long time. But I've been promoting for a while now, especially ever since the Steam Deck came out, like if you're just looking at grabbing a laptop almost primarily for gaming, you should just be looking at the Steam Deck or something similar nowadays anyways. Um, laptops obviously give you more mobility than like a desktop does, but it's still kind of just a pain in the butt to lug one around and if you're actually going to be in doing any legitimate gaming on a laptop, then it's like you still have to pull out peripherals for it, you know, like mice and, you know, things like that. In my opinion, and especially if it's a laptop that has a dedicated GPU, you should be running some kind of fan cooling system underneath it to make sure it doesn't heat up too much and damage the uh, hardware in it. You know, it's it's always just been a kind of a pain to deal with laptops for gaming. Um Again, it's it's uh, better than, you know, I mean, a desktop, you can't do that. But um, nowadays with how prominent and how, how evolved, you know, mobile technology has become and how, how well the, the uh, mobile devices are being developed and everything, man, I think that for gaming, laptops are going to be starting to take a real, like a backseat big time, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, back in like 2018, I bought one. I was doing a lot of traveling for work and I've got, I've got one with like a 1060 in it and, and it does a good, it's still, it, dude, it's still thumping that thing. My son plays on it all the time. He, he loves it. You know, he, it's kind of, <laughs> he's kind of like commandeered it as like <laughs> his, his gaming PC, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like it's like his if he's gonna play pc games he's on that laptop it, it does it's dude it's it's a banger that thing still does a good job um but it's it's just you know as far as like if you actually need something you know for for on the go gaming nowadays i think the transitions well beyond i think where people should it 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 just depends like i said if you actually are just focused on only gaming on a device, I think you're better off just getting a dedicated gaming handheld for PC. But if you actually are going to be able to use it as, you know, something to game on as well as like naturally what a PC gives you as like a tool and a utility, you know, 
also, then it makes sense to have a laptop, you know? That's what it was for me. I, I, you know, even though there weren't, the PC side of handhelds weren't where they are now back whenever I bought my laptop, um, I needed it for both things. I, I needed it to game one while I was traveling, but I needed it for work stuff and, and uh, you know, things like that too. So um, it, it served a dual purpose for me very well. Yeah. <sighs> I'll pull this up. I'll pull this up. That way we know, you know, more, you know, we have as many details as possible about Phantom Liberty. Look, I've already expressed my sentiments about this. Um, we saw yesterday, I've got an, a, an article from our new section, our new segment yesterday that I put up on YouTube. I mean, I preface, or I, I you know, at the beginning of that segment, I basically told everybody it's not, it wasn't going to be a popular opinion for most people. And I didn't really care. Uh, I'm not a fan of CD Projekt Red, dude. I'm just not. I don't like the way they conduct their business. Um, I uh, I think that they're very fortunate to have had so many people stick with them through the things they've done. And um, I see the more I see come out of them, the more I see them trending downwards as a big game developer. Um, they're lucky that. They've been able to survive on um, having really good content in their games because the performance of their games has been subpar, in my opinion. Um, especially Cyberpunk. Especially Cyberpunk. And uh, this whole Phantom Liberty uh, situation, there are multiple fronts on this that are a big turn off to me, too. And so... Um, you know, I put out a segment, I put out a, a clip yesterday from our new segment that was basically the price got leaked on Phantom Liberty. I think it's, uh, you can check it out. It's out there. I, I think it sucks that they're not just like giving people that content to say sorry about the way we released the game, in my opinion. As I said, that's not going to be a popular opinion for most people. I don't really care. I think that um, too many people got cheated by uh, CD PR um, with the release of Cyberpunk. And uh, the least they could have done was come out with this uh, expansion, this DLC, and said, yo, we're sorry. Here you go. So, I don't know. We'll pull it up. But um, CDPR has quickly become one of those AAA gaming studios that I uh, I really don't care to play any of their content anymore. Oh, yeah, dude. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's a solid laptop, dude. Yeah, that's a solid laptop, bro. I just uh I just don't want to I, I just don't care to support uh CDPR anymore as a uh, a company as a game developer it just the more I see come out of them the more it's just they're just kind of really gross to me. <laughs> I love GOG. I love their uh their GOG platform. I think it's great. I'll still promote the crap out of that. Starfield's additions and EU pricing revealed, okay? Oh, word. Yep. Yep. You see that kind of stuff a lot. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Bro, that, <laughs> that picture you posted last night, all I could think whenever I first saw it was like, Bro, I would, I've got pretty decent peripheral vision. Bro, I would see that dragon just like peeping on me the entire time I'd be gaming, dude. <laughs> it would freak me out. <laughs> that, that dragon just be just like in my grill all the time, dog. 
Look, dude, I'm not diving into showcase leaks. All right, I'm going to watch the showcase. Well, we got Xbox showcases uh, tomorrow. So, I, uh, dude, why? I, I'm not, I don't care about leaks. I'd rather just be surprised with what they're going to give me whenever I see it, man. All right, I, I don't, I don't want to be uh, spoiled on stuff, man. <laughs> like I said, dude, what I was, dude, the, the, the teeth looked so gnarly and sharp. You know me, man. I'd be playing these games and like I'd be sitting here playing grounded and I get like freaked out by a, a spider and be like, what? And, like jump to the side and dude, my head would be stuck in that that dragon's mouth and pelled on teeth and stuff, dude. Oh, HP Omen. Um, what is this? There's a monitor, uh, monitor deal right there. If anybody's interested, um, I'm not big on HP stuff. But you can save 80 bucks on the 27 inch, uh, 240 hertz um, Omen monitor right there, or the uh, 34 inch, which is looking curved. I think it said it was curved, 165 hertz. There you go. Gabs, what's up, yo? What's going on, Gabs? So, just in case you guys, guys are interested, I'll throw that in there. I'm not going to hit on it in the news or anything, but. Hello, hello. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 1. I'll never get used to that, dude. It just seems so unoriginal. Um, Mortal Kombat 1 um, does look very good, though. It does. And I'm glad. I like the fighting game genre. I just don't dive into it anymore. I haven't really since I was really young. But, dude, I love Street Fighter. I love Mortal Kombat. And I've always thought Tekken was cool. Uh, I've never gotten into Tekken like I did the other two. But. Ooh, Gabs, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, that sucks. Oh no, that feels bad, dude. I'm sorry. CD Projekt Round up Witcher 4 and Cyberpunk Orion. Take a look at this with the other Cyberpunk stuff, I guess. Uh, yo, that sucks. Uh, I'm sorry. God, we all fell in life, man, in, in various forms and fashions, you know what I mean? Um, it's not about, again, I, I think, I know it's hard to probably look at it like this right now, but it's not about how you fell, it's about how you pick yourself up, you know what I mean? I know that sounds very cliche, but it's really true, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, word, psycho, nice, dude, nice. It really is, you know? It's like, um, how do you how do you respond, basically, to failure, you know? Do you uh, learn from it and do you become better as you move forward or do you make those same mistakes again and just not grow as a person? Um, that, that's that's life. You know what I mean? Life, in my opinion, should be about it's OK. It's OK to, to mess up. It's OK to fail. Um, I mean, hopefully you're not messing up in a way that catastrophically changes your life in, in, in terrible, terrible ways or anything. But, you know, um that's how uh, learning happens, you know. It, you should be able to take those experiences and, and 
um, take a beat, look at what, you know, the situation, how it unfolded, what, what resulted in that taking place and maybe, uh, how you can address it better moving forward or whatever, you know? So, um, try to, try to have, try to take it as a glass half full kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Try to, try to do something to lift your spirits up a little bit. Yeah. That sucks. I'm really sorry. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, what kind of are we? I mean, are we, are we talk, talking like you just kind of went like? Did we? Are we talking like? Did you get a pixie cut or something? Or did you go? I need a haircut, and then you went and got like a little trim. <laughs> uh oh! Hold on! Hold on! Real gamer kid, huh? Yo, real gamer kid, what's up? Um, you can't post links in here, brother. Friendo, only specific people can post links in here, so I don't know what you're trying to do, man. But um, as a first time chatter, that's pretty sus pretty sus to just be dropping in here and just trying to bang out some links dude without saying anything else first but um i'll give you the benefit of the doubt here oh did you nice cool gabs made you feel a little bit better i hope real gamer kid seven six four monka hmm dude monka hmm dude where's psych at <laughs> where's psych bro I need, I need psych right now, Doug. <laughs> He'd be all over this, Doug. He'd be all over this. All it is is like, basically, they tried to post a link, dude. They tried to post a link. Yeah. I don't even know who that. I mean, it's the first time they've ever tried to chat in here before, and then they just. We should we'll get them <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, that's why I have it set up like this, right? Because um, this this is not like a a uh, a rare thing that happens people be diving diving in here on accounts we had some weird stuff pop off yesterday too check this out i'll link it i'll put it in the discord yesterday um uh, last night after i made the clip hold on so this is this was pretty funny this one's pretty funny so basically the the background on this is we had somebody else pop pop off here in the community yesterday and um ask the same exact questions first and basically they they came in they're like oh i'm a cre I'm, I'm a creative artist you know i'm a digital artist and and um i want to um i was i was wondering if you were interested and in, you know they were really cool at first just like oh you your stream's cool da 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 and then they started popping off trying to like see if I was interested. I've had that stuff happen before and I, I respect people like trying to grind and do their thing and find work and everything. But I just, you know, I was really nice and I was like, nah, you know, I appreciate it, but I'm not looking for anything like that, you know? And, um, thanks for asking. But, and then they were like, can I, can I message you? Can I hit you up? And, and I reiterated to them that I wasn't interested, but if they felt like they, they wanted to had something they wanted to share with me, that's fine. And they're like, add me as a friend, add me as a friend. And finally I was like, stop. I was like, I'm in the middle of trying to address my community. You know what I mean? Like I, I've got other things I'm doing. You need to back off and chill out. And then like 10 minutes later, dude, 
another account came in asking the same exact questions almost and so this is the way i responded to it is what that video is right there so i don't know i don't know is real gamer kid still hanging out here no nah, real gamer kid out dude real gamer kid out yeah let's just uh let's put let's put a note on real gamer kid here put a note let's put a mod comment on on real gamer kid There we go. Seems good. Seems good. <clears throat> yeah. All right. We'll keep pushing. <laughs> Twitch is a trip, dude. This is a wild place, man. <laughs> it's a wild place. <laughs> what? <laughs> that video? Yo, Davey. What's up, dude? How How you feeling, bro? How's everything going? Happy Saturday, dude. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I just started acting. I was like, nah, I'm not real. I'm AI. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, what's funny is that, like, People just get on another account and come straight back in and be trying to do the same thing, you know, like people aren't going to realize, you know, um, they were almost asking the same exact questions to some of them yesterday. God, dude, Davey, I could not even imagine, bro. That'd be one of the uh, like just a super depressing thing for me, man. Um, I'm sorry, dude. So that's why yesterday when they came back in, as soon as, as soon as I got that, you can see in the video too, as soon as I got that follow notification, I was like, oh dude, like I immediately looked at their account and it was only like a few days old and I was like, here we go, dude. Cause that's one of the ways it's really easy for myself and moderators in the community to, to, to kind of tell if we're going to be dealing with like an actual user or if it's going to be um, maybe just like some kind of weird, you know, dupe account or a bot account or something, you know, if it's a, it's a, if it's a pretty recent, pretty new account, quite often it's going to be some, some like just weird bot or dupe account or something, you know, and that's what that was yesterday. And you can see, you can see the way I reacted right after they came in and, and followed. That's what I did. My reactions, because I looked at their account and I was like, here we go. This is it, you know. <laughs> oh, Gabs, dude, I appreciate that. I mean, look, um, here's what I'll say. You know, there are certain people that are like part of this community that have just been like yourself included. That's why, like, I'll throw you a sub every once in a while and stuff because you've already done stuff for me. Without me asking, just because you know you you've been part of what we do for a long time, you're 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 a fun part of what we do, and and you're good, you're good at doing stuff like that. So like, you know, sometimes if I just see you hanging without a sub and stuff, you're like, I'll throw you one because I appreciate that stuff. And so, um, it it's been that way for some other people and everything too. You know what I mean, dude? We haven't even had rando mode this morning. What are you doing, dog? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even had random mode yet, dude. Psycho's getting ahead of the game here. What's happening, bro? Um, oh, well, that's good, Davey. I'm glad, dude. I'm glad. Yeah. Well, I mean, so so here's the thing. This Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, I am going to be focusing on getting your your little gifts put in as rewards. Uh channel rewards. Um, this Wednesday was, was, uh, tough because I was spending the entire time when my parents were out visiting, you know what I mean? I hadn't seen them in a long time and, 
And so this this past Wednesday, I was off. I didn't really get to work on content. I was just tr- hanging out with a uh, family that was out, you know. Uh, but this coming Wednesday, I should be able to finally uh, take some extra time to get some of that, some more of that stuff done. So, yep, that's true. Psycho dude. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be random moding her. <laughs> oh no, what'd you do, Psycho? <laughs> Get wrecked, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You always do, bro. I know. I know. That's why I have to come at you sometimes. <laughs> um. So, yeah, no, it's like Pinky's done stuff. You know what I mean? You've done stuff. And you know, we've had uh, other people that have, have uh, chipped in here and there. And, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I'm not one of those. Oh, no, I know that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, I would never just tell anybody that like everything they ever made would end up on the channel. That's just not realistic. You know what I mean? But if it's something that I like and enjoy and think we might be able to incorporate, then, you know, absolutely. But that's just not realistic, right? So, um. What I will say is that, you know, as we move forward, if we end up getting bigger and and what I would probably try to do is is put certain individuals on like some kind of contract to pull in a percentage of what we do as long as they continue to contribute to the channel in, in certain ways. Pinky would be one for sure. Pinky's always a part of what we do. Playing games together, moderating. He's done content stuff, animated emotes, things like that. You know, so that's just like an example of, you know, it would be like, because I think that's that's only the right thing to do. It, the same thing with like, it, it, as we continue to get big, I, I would only feel like it would be right for, you know, moderators to get, uh, for us to set up some way to to contribute to moderators in the channel getting some some kind of cut, whether it be one day a month doing like a mod charity stream, you know what I mean, where every, everything that, that's made that day goes towards mods or whatever, you know. <laughs> Pinky Pinky literally has like imprints from my my legs on his shoulders, you know what I mean. <laughs> he just carries me around all the time, dude. <laughs> Pinky's awesome, dude. I mean, all you guys are. You know what I mean? All you guys are. But there's there's just definitely been some people that have been around here for a long, long time that aren't just they're more than just viewers. You know what I mean? They they actually have decided that they wanted to contribute to content and being a a uh a more ingrained part of what the channel is as well, you know, and, and for that, I mean, it's only right that if we continue to get bigger and we start making any kind of monetary means, um, you know, I would try to, in you know, get people in on, on what they deserve to, to be a part of with that, you know, of course you were psycho because that's where your mind always is <laughs> they're both very good they're both very good gabs yeah they'll be they'll they'll both be hooked up yeah yeah i just got to get the time to get it done all right let's keep going here so i mean that's always been something that uh has been on my mind about you know, if we continue to grow and, and turn into a decent sized community and, and 
start maybe getting some sponsors or, you know, just make any kind of decent, you know, this was this has just always been something that's been about pursuing a dream, you know, and for me, it's always been about, it's not been ever been about being, getting rich off of this or, or being famous. Dude, I don't want to be famous. I've never wanted to be famous. I've always thought that would be terrible. I don't, I don't want to be somebody of notoriety. I, that, I, I actually don't really care to have that happen. I mean, if it does, it does, you know what I mean? Cause quite often those go hand in hand. It, really all I want to be able to do is just to ke- keep pursuing my dream, which is to do this, hang out with cool people, enjoy the world of video games and, and, um, be able to, to, to make enough money doing it to sustain myself and my family's, uh, you know, enough, enough for us to have a, a decent quality life. I don't need to be wealthy, dude. You know, Mithra, what up dog? The psycho. <laughs> We've talked about this. <laughs> Shall did you guys see this? Yeah, see this? Check this out. Gabs, you'll probably love this, actually. I know you're you're lurking right now, but um, here's another good one from a uh, recent stream. There you go. If you guys didn't get to see that, that was pretty funny. I don't even know why I did that. You guys know me, man. I'm, I'm just kind of all over the place all the time, but I'm not, dude, I'm, I'm not buying into all this. Like everybody's like, people can't even just let the showcases roll out. (laughs) People are like data mine, the showcases to find out what's in them. It's like, bro, just wait, dude, we'll get it. We're like a day away, man. Oh, bro, I'm terrible at social studies. I suck at history, too. I'm not a history buff. A lot of people love history, dude. It was History's always been really, really boring to me. I'm a science guy, you know? I like science. Science and math. Math's cool. Uh, but when it comes to things like history and social studies and stuff, dude, I'm, I'm kind of terrible. See what else we got here. Gothic. Um, and some other channel or like on, on like your own channel or something. Yeah, look, there's uh if you're a pro uh if you've got a pro account for GameStop, there's a buy one get one free deal going on right now. We've already hit on it, but just know that's happening. So if if you're interested, but you gotta have a pro account. <laughs> oh dude. Yeah, probably so. I never, I never, I never tried to say I was a good singer. All right. I couldn't help it. For some reason, I saw it, that message in chat from Syak, and I was like, dude, I got to belt this one out. <laughs> it was just too weird. <laughs> I was like, I got to sing this, dude. Your own channel. All right. So this is what I'll say, Gothic. 
Um, I mean, you've got to be willing to set the the ground rules and and the precedents for what's going to be okay and not okay in your own community, you know. So if people are being like that, you've either got to just so so that's that's one of those things that I, that's why I tell people all the time, you know. Um, well, here's what it is. So I'll psycho. I mean, so I tell this to to content creators, people that are trying to get into content creation all the time. I, you know, I was a viewer on Twitch for, dude, probably close to a, you know, a decade, something like that before I, I ever even started streaming. Um, maybe not quite that long, but it was, it was the better part of a decade anyways. And what I realized was that obviously you guys know it, the internet by just naturally inherently what it provides people is a, a large sense of anonymity right and with that anonymity what people tend to do with it is just use it to be nasty you know and toxic so it's not that everybody does that but a lot of people will they they kind of like decompress and release and and some people just suck anyways but that's one of the ways they do it is just by like projecting hate and and toxicity out on on the the internet because they don't feel like it's ever going to come back and get them you know what i mean because of the anonymity behind it so one of the biggest things for me before i ever went live on my channel was i took like two to three weeks where i laid the groundwork for what our community is and it has had tweaks and changes along the way but the core of it has always been here ever since we started the core of it has always been here and uh, there's i think a a tough thing for a lot of content creators to have to address is you know especially whenever you're getting started or or when you don't have a whole lot of viewers or anything like that you you feel like you shouldn't be maybe banning people because you don't you don't you want you want to make sure you still have viewers or whatever but i think that's the wrong way to look at things and i'm not saying that's necessarily what gothic's doing here but i think a lot of people can get like that and i think the best thing you can do is from the get-go always make sure that anybody that wants to hang out and be a part of your community knows exactly what the community is about and what the guidelines are supposed to be that doesn't mean you're not going to have to tell people from time to time psycho I don't want to point any fingers here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to, you have to set the tone. You have to set the groundwork and the rules for what your community is going to be. And if people don't abide by those rules, then you have to let them know they've messed up, whether it be timeouts or just, you know, quite often what's happened with me is because I have the Discord channel and everything too, I'll talk to people offline. I don't want to be ousting people that I think are just, you know, making some maybe honest mistakes that have been part of the community for a while or whatever. I'm not trying to call people out in front of the entire community or anything like that. Usually that's all it takes. Maybe a one or two off kind of situation where I'll have to have a, a you know, kind of a private discord conversation with somebody and be like hey man look this is you know maybe a situation that's a bit concerning for me and and this is where i'm coming from and most of the time people are really cool and they're like yeah i get it dude understand cool cool and and but sometimes it'll come down to the fact of you need to time people out you've got to be willing to do that quite often that's going to piss people off and they're just going to leave but you've got to just be okay with that if you time people out, sometimes they're going to stick around and they're going to be more toxic after that. You've got to be ready to ban people when that happens. And sometimes they're going to be people that are just so blatantly gross and disrespectful and toxic that you just need to ban them outright ahead of time. Okay. And um, that's also something you've got to be willing to do. Right. 
And um, the thing is, if, if if you don't set the tone for what your community is supposed to be, you're going to let other people do that for you. And that's where things get out of hand and out of control. And it's going to be very hard for you to go back and kind of re redo everything and, and set the tone back to what you want it to be set the rules back to what you want it to be if you let it get out of control in the first place right or if you don't set those rules in the first place and people just come in and do whatever that's why you know one of the big things i have and psycho will tell you you know psycho gets bullied by auto mod all the time because psycho walks that line heavier than about anybody else does in this community with um you know we we maintain a safe for work atmosphere here um and i have auto mod set very strict in this community because we don't condone bullying or hate speech or you know in you know discrimination this is an inclusive spot it's supposed to be safe and welcoming for people do we laugh and mess around and have fun and maybe do some subtle adult humor sometimes and stuff yeah absolutely Absolutely. But one of the reasons I have my auto mod stuff set over those kinds of things is so that I would rather it catch things that don't need to be caught. That way it doesn't hit chat and I can see it beforehand, right? So if things are okay, cool. All I have to do is hit allow and it hits chat and it's not a big deal. But if things come through that other people shouldn't see, and a user comes in and is saying stuff, right, that that doesn't need to hit my chat. Because that's a big thing about me, protecting my community and protecting my channel as well, right? So it allows me the opportunity to deny those messages as uh, while also getting rid of those people that come in here and shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff, right? So, um, yeah, 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 Ms. Rule, yeah. So it sucks that you're dealing with that stuff, Gothic, but I think you just have to understand that you are the one that has to set the tone. You're the one that has to set the rules. I mean, anybody that comes in here, my rules come up in the chat so people know what this community is about. My rules are underneath the Twitch channel as well so people know what the rules are about with this channel. Um my rules are in you know my discord channel as well the first time anybody joins the discord channel they get sent to the rules channel so they see everything and it's not again you know there are some people that are, are cool and they just might need to be reminded from time to time that they might need to chill a bit you know it's not that they're bad people they just need to they just might need to be reminded a little bit they need to chill you know um but that can also get to a point where where you might get fed up or whatever. But you need to be you need to be willing to uh, stand up for yourself and what what you will and will not accept and and what your community is about. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why do you feel attacked? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> so. It sucks that you're dealing with that, but I think that what you might need to do is take a beat, take a look at your, your channel and your community <laughs> about the rules. <laughs> the rules are there for a reason, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so there are all kinds of uh, just inherent options in your Twitch channel alone that you can go in and look at for setting um, natural moderation for things that, you know, like how strict you want the, the Twitch, your Twitch channel to moderate for, um, you know, bullying or, um, harassment and things like that. Um, and then, you know, there, there are other bots that you can incorporate to try to help take care of anything outside of that. So, um, and I think it's very important that you take a look at, um, Maybe some other, this is what I did. I'll be completely honest with you. I had been a viewer on Twitch for a long time and there were different communities. There were different things about different communities that I enjoyed, right? So what I did was I went and took a look at the rules 
for all those different communities. And I took bits and pieces from these different communities that I enjoyed. And I meshed those all together with my own kind of sentiments and my own things that I wanted this community to be about as well. And I made my own rule set. And again, the, the meat of what that initial rule set was is still here. Most of that has not changed. There's been small tweaks and, and, and changes along the way over the past two years, but for the most part, it's still there. I think you just need to take a hard look at that. And if people violate, you push them back to it and go, time them out and go, did you not read the rules when you came into chat? You know, if they keep making an ass out of themselves, ban them. Just ban them out. They can always send you an unban request and you can decide whether you want to unban or just keep them banned or whatever. You know what I mean? But I think the biggest thing you can do is make sure that you're protecting, you know, what you want your community to be, you know? Yeah, that sucks, Gabs. I hope that helps gothic, you know, uh, it sucks that you're dealing with that, but I think that's the best, uh, advice I can give you to like, get you down that path. You know, I mean, that's kind of basically what it is. You know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta kind of, you know, you gotta get give a little bit of discipline here and there for people that might step out of line for what what your you know your rules are. You know, yeah. yeah. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps, Rindo. You know. <laughs> I'll burn this mother down. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Sorry, I know I know that that was a little bit of a, a long talk, but I think it's important for you know I want to help out people that and there it is. There's the random moat. Well, Gabs and Psycho already got theirs in, so these don't count. I'm just kidding, guys. Go for it. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing, dude. Yeah, dude, just burn it down. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've got we've got a lot of friendos that are are uh, content creators and stuff, and and. It's it's not an easy thing to uh, it's not an easy thing to start your venture into streaming. I don't think you know, and um, I didn't really have anybody to to. I was a big lurker, dude. In most chats, in most channels, I was just a big lurker. I just enjoyed the content. I didn't talk much or anything, to be honest. I was always busy doing other stuff, working or you know doing things around the house or whatever. So I didn't really have the opportunity to uh, to chat much. But I was always listening in the background or you know working on other stuff and would have it on another monitor or something like that, you know. And uh, so for me, I didn't really have a resource to to. Um, kind of hit up for any kind of advice or anything. This has all been like just kind of solo learning as I go kind of stuff, you know, that's it. So if I can help somebody, man, I'm going to try to do that. All right, let's keep it going. Yeah, we saw that in the showcase the other day. We've already got that up. Steam's next big game is free to download. Let's go. Dude, we talked about this a few days ago. This parent just needs to get wrecked. They shouldn't be able to get any of this money back, in my opinion. Tough lesson learned, but dude, that's a that's a really stupid move to just give your, your kid a phone with an, an unlocked, you know, like account, $64,000. No, Psycho, I didn't. Do you, uh, do you have a, uh, yo, here, I'll shout you out, Gothic. There you go, guys. Um, Where'd you see that at, dude? 
Refunds for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Really? Yo, uh, shoot it, shoot it to me on, uh, Discord, Doug. Shoot it to me on Discord. Uh, DM me on there, dude, if you don't mind. Give me that DM, Doug. Slide up in my DMs, bro. We've already talked about those. Yo, I'm calling it right now. Path of Exile 2 will be better than D4. Yeah, Legend of Zelda movie. Yo, I got a clip about that too. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Gothic, yeah. Yo, check this out. <laughs> Hold on, dude. Hold on. Check this noise. Can't concentrate. I'm sorry, Gabs. Offering refunds to anyone who has pre-ordered any edition of Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodlines 2. As part of this process, proactively refunding all pre-orders of physical products, including collector's edition, two days ago. Really, dude? Yo, I already figured out the casting for the new Zelda movie that's uh, going to be coming from um, Illumination and uh, Universal, by the way. Check that out right there. I got it figured out already. Let me see if I can find it, dude. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You'd have to link it to me on Discord, Doug. Yeah, check that out right here, probably. Tech Radar, Steam RPG, yeah, yeah. You know me. Refunding pre-orders, dude. Yo, we'll pull that up. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, dude. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know that we've hit on that. <laughs> Two less. All right. Maybe we'll see it later, okay? We'll be, uh, yo, we've got showcases we're going to watch for gaming stuff a little bit later. So after the news and everything. So if you get your stuff taken care of or whatever, you want to come hang out. You know, we love having you around. So, good luck on getting your stuff done, though. Yeah, that's what I was kind of figuring, too, Psycho. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good, Gabs. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Sorry about the uh, test and everything. That sucks. But I'm sure your hair looks amazing. Yeah, the RoboCop Rogue City it's trailer I watched, or <clears throat> we watched it together actually. The most recent one, it just lo it looked so repetitive. I don't know, man. Um, RoboCop's dope. I like RoboCop, but it just looked really repetitive, man. I don't know. Immortals of Avium? You mean um, Magic Call of Duty, right? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, they probably were getting blown up, dude. <laughs> Psycho, you probably were not the only one by far. We've seen all this stuff. Sony skipping Gamescom again this year, yeah. 
I don't think that's a surprise. The Xbox Showcase is tomorrow. Spider-Man 2 fans think a Wolverine cameo was just teased. That's clickbait. We'll just stick with this, dude. Right, yeah, dude. I've always liked RoboCop, dude. But, yeah, I don't know. This, this new one, it doesn't look bad. It just looks real repetitive. But, I, I, dude, I mean, that's one of the, the issues that, you know, I'm always worried about with games anyways. But it's hard to tell quite often. When you get a limited uh, look at, at the trailers that, that, you know, developers give you, you always want to see gameplay. But, like, everything that we were seeing from RoboCop, it was it was not like a short trailer, but it looked very very repetitive, and um, I don't know. I tend to it's like Immortals of Avium looked repetitive, and uh, dude, Witchfire looked repetitive to me too. It's like God, I don't know, man. I'm I hope I'm wrong, you know. Hope I'm wrong. Let's get in here. Steam's next big game is free to download check uh, and check out this month. Who doesn't like a good free EB, especially when we're being given a video game with no strings attached? The free game in question is the upcoming uh, medieval multiplayer title Warhaven. Developed and published by Nexon, Warhaven is a PvP medieval fantasy uh, combat game for two teams of up to 16 players each. Choose your soldier, lead your squad into combat, and incarnate as a powerful immortal to turn the tide of war. Uh, we saw this, but uh, let's watch it again real quick. If you, for those of you that didn't catch it, all right. This looks pretty dope, actually. The new movie sucked. I thought it was all right, dude. <laughs> I actually like that guy that uh, that played RoboCop too. I like I like him as an actor. <laughs> You're just gonna have to keep hanging out, Doug. <laughs> This looks pretty cool. It looks like it could be fun, dude. As long as they let me be a necromancer, you know what I mean? Necromancer for the win. Well, yeah, I mean, look, there's no reason not to grab it if it's going to be free, right? As reported by Dualshockers, Warhaven looks to be in a similar mold to the likes of Ubisoft's For Honor. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. As well as, as Chivalry 2, which was recently made available on PS Plus. During its launch, Warhaven will have two game modes, Domination and Skirmish. Much like Call of Duty made uh, mode Domination, Domination and Warhaven will require players to take over various outposts, hold them until the match ends. Whereas Skirmish will have just one outpost located in the middle of the map. Warhaven's dynamic melee combat rewards... New recruits and veteran players alike choose from a roster of unique soldiers, each with their own motivations for fighting beneath the banner of Warhaven. Read the description on the Steam page. Warhaven will have six different soldier classes to choose from, each with their unique weapons and abilities to shape the battlefield in your favor. Every soldier has the potential to incarnate as an immortal, and each immortal fights with their own distinct powers. Offer your faith to the immortal most suited to the obstacles you face, from the devastating swordplay of Martyr to the long-range magic of Raven. Free to play on PC, set to release this fall. You can get an early taste of the game with a playable demo during Steam Next Fest between 19 to 26 June. Pull it up real quick. 
We'll keep track. We'll keep track. I mean, uh, so here, here's the thing. Free to play makes it easy for us to get in there and try this game and play some like community stuff together, which is dope. But is there going to be pay to win? Or is it just going to be like skins and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Um, cosmetics. What do... Uh, Free to play always has those questions behind it, right? So we'll see. Uh, I'll link you the uh, the Steam page for you guys, though. There you go. Actually, actually, stop it, stop it. There we go. Data shows most Switch owners are women. Gamers react poorly. What? Why would why react poorly? New data also reveals that 45% of Xbox owners and 41% of PS5 owners are female too. So? It's almost like there are both men and women who play video games. What? Yo, all right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this really shouldn't be news. <laughs> I agree. It shouldn't. It certainly shouldn't be surprising to anyone. But yes, new data from Circana shows that, as we told you in 2017, women play video games. Yeah, as they should. Because humans like video games. In fact, more than half of all Switch owners are women. And a very vocal bunch of idiots are reacting about... Uh, as well as you'd expect to this revelation. Oh my God, dude. On June 9th, Matt uh, Piscatella, the executive director and video game industry and now, uh, analyst at Circana, tweeted out some newly released data about who is buying and playing video games in the U.S. According to Circana's player poll so far in the U.S. during 2023, 47% of console video game players are female, 50% of PC video game players are female, and 54% of mobile video game players are female. First, Piscatella revealed uh, that so far in this year, a lot of women are playing games on all platforms under the sun, which we just read those stats. Piscatella then posted more data about how many women own specific consoles in the U.S. 41% PS5, 45% Xbox Series XS, and 52% uh, of Switch. Angry Gamer Bros. Basically, a bunch a bunch of sexists is what it is. Well, many people reacted to this data with a sensible, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or, yep, that is reality. I've met plenty of women who play games in 2023. Why? I don't understand. Like, why would being a different gender... make you less likely to enjoy entertainment. What? In the replies to Piscatella's tweets, many have reacted to the data with anger, skepticism, and crappy jokes. Some suggest that the data is wrong or the owner's stats are skewed by moms buying consoles for boys. This isn't how the monthly surveys work or how data is collected, something Piscatella pointed out in the follow-up tweets. All of these silly theories were not only wrong, but revealed that a lot of these dudes likely have little contact with actual women or, for that matter, reality itself. Yeah. Sound like a bunch of incels, dude. Oh. 
that's very funny about the reactions from these angry gamers is that many of them are dunking on themselves very hard. I've seen multiple men post that they can't find these gamer girls and thus they don't buy these stats. Checking uh, their other tweets is pretty clear why women might be avoiding them. Others asked where all these women were online in games like Call of Duty, pointing out that they rarely hear girls in multiplayer lobbies. To those people, I suggest you scroll through all the angry replies to Piscatella's stats. Take note of all these mad dudes making fun of women for playing The Sims and mobile games, calling them fake gamers and inventing elaborate conspiracy theories involving data manipulation and woke agendas. Hmm, yeah, I wonder why women might want to keep a low profile when playing online games or interacting with gaming. Yeah, dude, we've read plenty of... Um, research articles about how much uh, discrimination women get just from playing like specific online games too. Like if specifically Call of Duty was one of them that I read here recently in an article. It was just terrible. They did a, a uh, there was Call of Duty and Valorant, I think were two of the ones that were used where <clears throat> there was, uh, they took a group of men and um, did a research project about letting these men just utilize their their normal voices in um, voice chat, playing those games like Valorant and Call of Duty, and uh, how others reacted to them as far as like uh, co op gameplay and and um, incorporating them as part of the team, things like that, you know, and uh, then how much different so what they did they then used uh they implemented um voice changers for for those same exact individuals voice changers uh so game game style game their gameplay uh stayed the same right they didn't change the way they played the game or anything like that skill level was at the same same uh level all that stuff um and they used voice changers to make them sound like women and it was a completely different scenario. Nobody wanted them on the team hardly. Like they were just getting blasted the whole time by like all these uh, like sexist flipping dudes in the games and stuff like that. It was ridiculous. Because like, that's one of the more, more recent articles we read. And it was it's really gross, dude. So yeah, of course, man. But, like a, a lot of a lot of women are, are not going to be super, you know, upfront about wanting to be known as a woman in gaming because they get discriminated against all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think you, yo, what's up, dude? So angry dudes online, maybe stop uh, acting so defensive and uh, crappy about games being played by women. Instead, realize that they've always been here. And if you feel like they're hiding from you, maybe ask yourself why that is. Yeah, good article, dude. Good article. Wow. Yeah. There's just some really, really stupid, toxic individuals in the world. It's really gross. Keep gaming, ladies. Keep gaming, dude. Everybody. Sorry, guys. One second. No, dude, I don't want to. 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 I've been saying that the whole time, dude. I don't. I don't want spoilers from the showcases. I don't want spoilers from showcases, dude. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm so tired of like people data mining the showcases and stuff. Can I? Ju I just want to be able to enjoy the showcases, dude. God dang. I've been saying that for like days now. I see all these flipping news articles and everything and, are, and I just avoid all of it. I don't want to see any of it. I just want to watch the flipping showcases. Let me, let me just be surprised by what they give me, dude. Everybody wants to data mine the crap. We're going to get it in like just a number of days, man. People need to ch just chill out and watch. God.
<laughs> Isn't I mean what what what's the fun in that, dude? I don't understand the fun in trying to like like spoil all of it, dude. This is like such a great time of for gamers. This is such a great time of the year, man. Getting to watch, they're getting hyped up for the showcases and see everything that drops whenever they're ready to give it to you. And, and it's just so full of spoilers all over the place. I just want to watch it, dude. just want to watch. I don't want to know. I just want to watch and see what they give me. And if I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed. Cool. But if, I'm, if I get to see stuff that, you know, I was hoping was there, cool. I don't want to know ahead of time, man. I just want to see it. I just want to watch it, dude. Yeah. All right. uh, save big on Steam Deck games for a limited time. Uh, Green Man Gaming's only go sell features steep discounts on Steam games that are playable on Steam Deck. Um, never have too many games in your Steam library. If you're looking to add a few new titles to your collection that'll work on your Steam Deck, then good news because Green, Green Man Gaming has a great sale right now. The only go sale has discounts for dozens of games, all of which are verified to work on the Steam Deck. Sale runs till June 23rd, so you have two weeks to make your picks. We've listed some of the highlights below, but we'd recommend checking out the catalog for yourself. Too many great deals to list here. One of the titles that uh, you can grab at a discount in is this year's surprise hit, Hi-Fi Rush, baby. Uh, yeah, still my game of the year so far. Uh, it's colorful, charming, and action-packed content. Plays like Devil May Cry meets Scott Pil Pilgrim. If you have a great sense of rhythm, then this game's combat is going to feel incredibly rewarding. Don't worry if you're not the most gifted when it comes to keeping a beat, uh, as the game has plenty of assists that help you uh, have great a great time. Yeah. Um, another game that's all about mastering rhythm is Sifu. Although you'll be using fists instead of guitars, you should deliver punishing blows to anyone who gets in the way of your revenge. An elegant brawler... With uh, challenging scenarios, Sifu will test your skills to the max, but mastering virtual martial arts is the process that can feel incredibly fulfilling. For a change of pace, check out Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, a game that has reviewed very, very well, but didn't sell very well, um, which is kind of odd. Uh, developed by Eidos Interactive, this is a gorgeous cosmic rock opera with terrific teamwork that makes the dream work, baby. Um, if you're looking for pure bang for your buck, can't go wrong with uh, Star Wars Skywalker Saga, Saga. They also have, um, lastly, you can round out your collection with a few games that won't cost more than a deluxe coffee. Stasis is surprisingly effective horror with an old school script. Chris Tells is an adventure, uh, RPG adventure that makes great use of time travel gameplay mechanics. And the 2016 reboot of Doom is brutal fun that never gets old. You can see right here, Green Man Gaming on the go sell. Uh, 20 bucks, Hi-Fi Rush. Skywalker Saga, 20 bucks as well. Skyrim Special Edition's uh, 8.50, nice. Ghostwire Tokyo, dude. So this is the same developer, if you didn't know. This is Tango. The same developer behind uh, Hi-Fi Rush. That game is $20 as well. Guardians of the Galaxy at 15 dude. I wish more people would uh, dive into this, I'll be honest. Um, I think, I haven't even played it yet, so I, I might even pick it up and play it. Because I, this game got reviewed very, very well. And it feels bad that, you know... We're, we're in a, a situation here um, where there are so many bad releases nowadays that unfortunately sell well. <laughs> that like whenever games are really good, they deserve to sell better, you know? And this is one of those occasions, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, that apparently this game was pretty solid. Uh, it's reviewed up into the, the uh, 80s on Metacritic and uh, overall consensus this is a very good game but it didn't sell very well and um i think more people need to take a look at playing uh, guardians of the galaxy doom is four dollars and 25 cents red dead redemption 2 is 17 sifu is 24 dollars crystal is just over six dollars frostpunk is under five dollars fallout 4 is just under six dollars stasis is a dollar and 28 cents mad max is four dollars evil within two also a Tango game, fantastic. Uh, has one of my favorite uh, antagonists in it, Stefano. Uh, uh, $7. The uh, Middle Earth games are $4 and $7 respectively. Prey is just over 6 
Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire Definitive Edition is $8. If you like CRPGs with amazing stories and um, just fantastic writing and amazing lore, characters, uh, choices matter, do yourself a favor and pick up Dead Fire. What a great game. I got over 300 hours in this. And if you're going to get over even... I I don't play my game super fast or anything, but um, you will get well over 200 hours worth of gameplay in this. Uh, I, I, will, I would say, uh, even if you're kind of playing through it fast and not searching out all the quests and stuff like that, probably over 150 to 200 hours. And at $8, that is hard to beat. Hard to beat. If you like CRPG kind of games, uh, get Deadfire. And Batman Arkham Origins for uh, just under four. Dude, there's a lot of good sales right here. A lot of good sales. Those will probably all be uh, Steam codes, I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Steam games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that. I knew that. I knew that. I'm going to have to go take a look at some of those. Um, okay, dude. Um, everything we know about Cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty. It's an understatement to say that uh, Cyberpunk got off to a rocky start. Game has steadily improved over the last few years. Um, now the uh, fires are out. Game is finally set to receive its first significant expansion, Phantom Liberty. According to CDPR, the new DLC is expected to delve deeper into the futuristic world of Night City, offering players an immersive spy thriller experience with a star-studded cast and exciting new gameplay mechanics that you'll only be able to play on um, new-gen consoles, even though the game released on previous-gen consoles. Although the official release date for Phantom Liberty has yet to be confirmed, rumors suggest the expansion will hit sometime in uh, August. Phantom Liberty will be available for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Perhaps unsurprisingly, CDPR has phased out support for PS4 and Xbox One, opting to leverage the enhanced capabilities of the latest gaming hardware, which suffered from significant performance problems when the game initially launched. But uh, still leaving all those people that still um, own this game and don't have a current-gen console in the dust, basically. As for pricing, um, we found this out yesterday. The expansion will be... Oh, nice, Pinky. Oh, cool. Okay, dude. Nice, nice. Awesome, dude. All right. Um, the expansion, we, we hit on this yesterday. I've got an article up on uh, YouTube right now. Expansion will be a paid DLC, which I uh, very, very much disagree with. And I'll TLDR that in a moment. But with an estimated cost of uh, 30 euros or 30 pounds and about $35 US, price point has raised eyebrows considering it exceeds the combined cost of all the DLC released for uh, CDPR's arguably more successful title, The Witcher 3. I'm just hoping the development time and price point will reflect in the final product's quality. Um, I think the least they could have done was uh, push this content out for free, considering how... Uh, terrible of a release this game was i'm glad they stuck with it i'm glad they turned it into something decent but it never should have released the way it was and they cheated a lot of people out of money on that on the release of this game this game should have never released the way it did and uh they knew what they were doing there there was no doubt it was every platform was an absolute nightmare even pc where it was still playable was bug ridden crashes everywhere for a lot of people it was it was a mess and in my opinion there's no way they didn't know that this game uh was not ready they decided to market and um <clears throat> promote the crap out of it anyways and then push it out and uh make a bunch of people feel cheated out of their money and in my opinion the least they could have done was push out at least this first expansion for it or whatever big expansion and uh just give it to people as a way to say, yo, uh, we're sorry, and uh, thanks for sticking by the game. I think it's gross they're making people pay for this. I'm not a fan of CDPR, dude. I'm not a fan of CDPR. Uh, I just keep seeing more and more trends of, of this company that 
tur- or a big turn off for me. Uh, Phantom Liberty introduces new characters to the cyberpunk universe, including uh, Idris Elba and Solomon Reed. And the return of Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand. Uh, the expansion setting is rumored to be an all-new district within Night City, possibly the Pacifica combat zone. Dangerous and heavily fortified area, isolated from the rest of Pacifica, presents players with unique challenges and exciting gameplay opportunities. Infiltration and espionage will be critical components of the expansion. Um, Sasha Gray um, will be hosting the uh, 89.7 Growl FM radio station. As DJ Ash. Looks like they're trying to say there's going to be improved core mechanics such as uh, police AI, vehicle to vehicle combat, uh, if they can pull it off. I love GOG. I actually can't stand CDPR, really. I think they're kind of disgusting. <clears throat> Just another example of the uh, so many of the AAA devs anymore, in my opinion. They've got they've got a huge fan base because they're pretty good at content. They have been. It's it's another one of those things, dude. Uh, you know so many so many developers over the years have have developed a huge fan base that te- tends to get blinded by um how gross they've become because they just there's they've been become such big fans of a certain company or developer or whatever over the years and uh that that's the way I feel about CDPR right now um a lot of what they do is just really really gross to me anymore and uh, I don't know, I'm not a fan of them, dude. I'm not a fan of them. I won't buy their games on release. I won't pre-order their games anymore. Um, it's not going to happen for me. So, I don't know. People keep feeding the beast, dude. And uh, you'll keep getting what you pay for it. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I can't believe, like, I don't know, man. How many people are still just so adamant about taking up for CDPR after... They are literally the poster company for the the most notoriously horrendous nightmare release in modern gaming history. And they knew what they were doing. It's not like it was an accident, dude. Um, more CDPR, uh, news. So Witcher 4 and Cyberpunk Orion revealed, uh, CDPR are busy right now. The slate of new projects confirmed to be in the pipeline with the studio looking to capitalize on the success of Witcher 3 and in Cyberpunk, uh, with new entries in both series, along with the new IP that has yet to be revealed. Witcher in particular is getting a brand new trilogy of games. The Cyberpunk franchise is looking to go in one direction, in a new direction once, uh, Cyberpunk's first and only major DLC, Phantom Liberty, has been been released. Um, so it looks like The Witcher 4 Polaris uh, will be continuing Geralt's saga. Looks like uh, The Witcher Polaris is currently in pre-production. Looks like they have an eye on next-gen. Uh, developing Witcher 4 using Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, the Switch promises enhanced visual fidelity, more immersive gameplay experience, allowing fans to lose themselves in the landscapes and intricate narratives the uh, series is renowned for. Hopefully it'll get rid of a bunch of their bugs, too. Witcher 3 was still full of bugs, dude. I played it last year, so it was like, what, four years after release? It was still just riddled with bug i had crashes and stuff too um so i'm glad they're moving off that engine hopefully uh ue5 will be a much better thing for them new witcher trilogy studio also announced that it intends to follow through with a new witcher trilogy 
Following the release of Polaris, the trilogy will slowly unfold over a six-year period with a focus on delivering a cohesive package of games within this time frame. I'm looking forward to an epic journey that builds upon the rich lore established in previous titles. Should be a wild ride and one I'm really happy to hear confirm. Uh, let's see. Which are serious. A new multiplayer adventure. Um, CD Projekt Red's recent acquisition, The Molasses Flood, is developing The Witcher series. Unlike previous Witcher games, this installment will feature multiplayer and single-player modes tied together with captivating campaign quests and a compelling story. The game's multiplayer component is a long-desired feature for the Witcher universe and will, for the first time, allow fans to explore its depths alongside friends and fellow adventurers. <clears throat> the Witcher uh, 1 is getting a remake. We knew that. Teaming up with Fool's Theory, an external studio uh, to look back as well as ahead, confirming a complete remake of the original Witcher game, headed by experienced developers who have worked on past Witcher games. Fool's Theory aims to breathe new life into the beloved title, while details are still scarce. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looks like they're going to be using UE5. Anytime you get a uh, remake of a notorious title like this, what you want them to do is modernize it while really still capturing the essence of what made those original games great, right? So, hopefully... Expanding the cyberpunk universe. Moving on from the studio's plethora of Witcher projects, studio is also expanding upon the world of cyberpunk with new expansions and sequels. First and only major DLC for cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty will transport players to a new district of Night City, described uh, as a spy thriller. Yep, we talked about it. Looks like uh, CD Projekt Red has also confirmed Cyberpunk Orion, a sequel to 2077. Uh, no details as of now. And Project Hater, a uh, standalone IP. Separate from Witcher and Cyberpunk. It's in the conceptual phase now, so we won't know anything for a while, probably. If you need more, here you go. Is uh, yo Pink? Did you get all that stuff off of uh, Steam? Starfield's additions and EU pricing revealed. So Bill Bill Coon took to Twitter to reveal Starfield's additions and their respective price points for the European region, including the highly anticipated Collector's Edition, otherwise known as the Constellation Edition. We'll probably see this tomorrow too, but this isn't like a huge spoiler or anything. So, um. We know we're getting a huge Starfield showcase. All on Steam. Okay, yeah. Question mark, yeah? Yo, did you see uh, that, that clip I tagged you in uh, last night? <laughs> we got Color Wars. Did you see that? <laughs> so it looks like uh, from what this unconfirmed unofficial leak is saying context wasn't there he would just he was just so blue was just taking a look at your base and there was something i don't even know exactly what it was but he saw something in there and he was calling you a psycho for it i don't even know we'll have to ask blue uh, <laughs> i don't think he's gonna be around today he said he had some stuff going on today but uh he was actually he was looking at your science orb too you had the science orb <laughs> boxed in with the idols. And he was like, why is this science? And I was like, don't touch it. <laughs> he was like, it was around that time too. And he's like, Pinky's a psycho. <laughs> I was like, I'm marking that. Because <laughs> whenever he first got in the game, you know, and neither him or uh, obviously – True had been playing, and I was like, this is all pinky stuff over here, so just leave this stuff alone, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was like, don't touch that, dude! <laughs> so, uh, pricing for Starfield looks like in Europe, uh, unconfirmed here, but PC $70, Xbox Series X and S $80, uh, Euro, Premium $104, Euro, 115, no, 105 for PC premium. Xbox Series X and S, 115. Constellation Edition, 300 euros for PC and Xbox. 
Yeah, Bilbo Coons usually uh pretty good with this info, so it's probably gonna be on point here. Constellation edition will be physical only. No digital co collector's content will be made avail available. Wait, what? No, I, d I doubt that. There's a PC Constellation Edition, dude. You're not going to get a physical copy with this. One item believed to be in the Constellation Edition of the game is a Star Starfield smartwatch, which was revealed for the first time in a behind-the-scenes trailer. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll get confirmation of this tomorrow, I'm sure. Uh, Blasphemous 2. Uh, release date. Thanks to our buddy Ten Win Man, uh, he uh, caught this and, and pushed this over to me yesterday uh, afternoon. But uh, Blasphemous Two on twenty four August. Yo, do I actually have that? Uh... I've got to work on the schedule. I'm behind. Yeah, there we go. Twenty four August, dude. Nice. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Thanks, Tim Wynn. Appreciate it, buddy. Awesome. Release date announcement. Let's watch this. Peggy 16. Born on the shoulders of three mighty statues, the resounding beat of a great heart could be heard emanating from the clouds. Oh, bro, I can't wait. Blasphemous is a fantastic game, dude. Was about to give birth to a child. You got a really cool, like, gothic style of, of uh, a symbol in which art and everything. Fates, it's really wild. and hopes might be united in communion. baby cool man <clears throat> I'll link this for everybody thanks Tim Win. appreciate it buddy <clears throat> neato dude neato um this is the last thing I have for the uh the morning and then we'll uh We'll take a look at the schedule real quick for what we got going on today and tomorrow as far as showcases. Uh, big stuff going on today and tomorrow and even the following day. <clears throat> it's just we're heavy with it right now. And uh, we'll get a little bit of gaming in this afternoon, but it won't be extensive. It'll probably just be a couple hours worth or something. Uh, there's a lot of showcases today. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 publisher is now refunding pre-orders. This was two days ago. Shout out to Psycho. Thanks, buddy. Um, it doesn't seem like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is releasing anytime soon. Uh, Paradox Interactive has begun refunding pre-orders for the game's physical and digital versions. If you pre-ordered the physical version of Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodline 2 for PS5, Xbox Series XS, or last-gen systems, you won't have a say in the matter, as Paradox is automatically reimbursing those pre-orders regardless of edition. According to its official website, that's because the studio is updating the game's editions and bonus content. If you pre-ordered the game digitally, Paradox is prompting purchasers to contact the relevant online storefronts for a refund, whether that be through Steam, GOG, Epic, or otherwise. However, Paradox notes that the digital versions of the first Blood Edition, Unsanctioned Edition, and Blood Moon Edition will remain unchanged. Pre-order refunds might seem quite drastic for fans eager to play the sequel to the Trioka Games developed Immersive Sim, but it's not all bad news from the publisher. A new batch of screenshots has been published to Bloodlines 2's website, showing off some suitably gloomy locales and all featuring some rather nice lighting. In the update, Paradox also reveals that it will be ready to show more of the game in, uh, this coming September. That means Bloodlines 2 will be will more than likely be a no-show. Around the summer game showcase announcement season. Why are people still referring to this as E3 season? 
E3 has not happened for four years now. But it's reassuring. Who is this author, dude? Is it Reese? Wood? Rice? Wood? Yo, dude, get your crap straight. But it's reassuring that some semblance of silence will be broken later in the year. Bloodlines 2 is far from the only RPG we know next to nothing about. Uh, what with The Elder Scrolls 6 being announced way back in 2018 with little to no update since, and with Bethesda Games Studio Starfield taking center stage at the upcoming Xbox Game Showcase tomorrow, it's unlikely we'll get news on the fantasy epic anytime soon. In the meantime, a role-playing enthusiast may want to check out Baldur's Gate 3, which is leaving early access on PC and launching on console at the end of August. Yeah, man. So, there's some more stuff for you. All right, uh, look at the schedule real quick. That's not what I wanted. We have Future of Play Direct at in two hours. We have Wholesome Direct directly after that. And then, following that, Future Game Show. We also have not finished Guerrilla Collective, which we have an hour's worth of, maybe an hour and a half worth of, uh, content left in the Gorilla Collective to watch today. So we are going to wrap up the news here. We're going to watch the rest of Gorilla Collective we missed on Wednesday, and then we will be watching Future of Play Direct, Wholesome Direct, and Future Game Show probably all the way up till about 1,300 hours or 1 o'clock p.m. stream time, channel time, my time, um, CST. And then we'll play a little bit of Grounded to finish out the day, okay? Um that's the jam, dude. That's what we're going to do. Don't forget, get your free game. Get your free games. Uh, Epic Games, all right. Check it. Um, Payday. Payday 2 is free. It's free. They also have a sale going on. This game has a lot of DLC. <clears throat> They've got a sale going on for it. So it's going to have a lot of DLC you can pick up right now uh, on sale. Payday 3 is coming. So you can see there's a ton of uh, DLC for this game, okay? Um, but the base game's free right now if you'd like to check it out. I can't recommend at least trying the base game out enough. It's uh, a game that I played early in its release, and I loved it. And I cannot wait for Payday 3. Really excited. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> Go get some heisting in. It's free, okay? Get it, get it. That's the jam. That's the news, baby. That's the news. You guys rock? We're going to move on. Go watch a bunch of showcases for today and do a little bit of grounded gameplay, all right? Um, if anybody's checking out this video gaming news segment or we've got all our previous video gaming news segments uh, that we conduct at the beginning of every stream every day, we've got clips from those. We've got uh, entire gameplay playthroughs that are cut out into uh, episodes and we've got clips from just things that have happened here in the channel whether it be the video gaming news stuff or or you know from our gameplay or whatever there's just a bunch of funny stuff that goes on here we got an awesome community uh all of that stuff is on our youtube channel and on the twitch channel as playlists and and you can find all that out there on the links here in the channels um so if you're enjoying that content come hang out with us man we go live at 6 a.m cst uh six days a week right now uh for the foreseeable future we'll get back seven days a week at some point uh in the in the future but i'm just taking a day off each week right now to catch up on some stuff so um wednesdays are off right now but every other day for the foreseeable future uh six o'clock a.m cst we kick it off we always do video gaming news and uh to begin the stream and then we dive into whatever gameplay we have planned for the rest of the day yeah got a lot of awesome people that are part of what we do and uh if you're enjoying the content Come hang out with us, man. We uh, we have a good time, and uh, we're always looking for more cool people to be a part of what we do and enjoy the uh, the experience and help to build uh, build the community up here, man. So, um, I don't know. Other than that, man, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind to one another, and we'll catch everybody for our next edition of Video Gaming News uh, tomorrow, 6 o'clock a.m. CST on June 11th. All right.